one step, folks, one or two baby steps, and then a reminder, hold, come on, hold, come on, hold, come on, hold, good. Hey everybody, Ethan and Hex back for the next video in our Train to Tree series. If you have not already found out, this is a series. We have all of the steps combined into a course available at standingstonesupply.com slash courses. In that, we give you also the ability to schedule individual appointments with me weekly so that you can get my eyes on your training session. It's very important. This is probably one of the most difficult parts of the entire training process that you're trying to do at home if you're moving to that next step in the formal work, okay? Where we are at with this guy thus far is we've done all of our hold work that's been stationary. What we are moving into now is what we call hold and walk. Seems like it should be fairly easy because he can walk and he can hold, but ta walking and chewing bubble gum or something like that, it's not always so easy. And we see that more with some dogs than others, but be prepared for a challenge. How we work through this with our individual dogs though is again, taking the smallest steps possible um, so that we can get through this in a way that allows him to grow without basically encouraging failure so that he can be successful along the way. It's those small steps. What we're gonna start with is we'll go back in this process to something that's easy for him to hold, that he enjoys, and it doesn't matter which one it specifically is, just whatever your dog is best at holding, and then we're going to be taking one step at a time and I'll show you what that looks like here. All right, what do you want to hold? You wanna hold a little bumper? Mm, there. This one is typically, these fire hose bumpers work really well in this beginning stage. It's just a, a good texture. It's a lightweight, it's easy for the dogs to hold. Good, hold. Every session, um, we start with a little warm up. And this one, because we're gonna be moving into the hold and walk category, we're gonna do a little um, walking warm-up, one that we haven't done in a couple sessions. Good. Good boy. Kind of feeding each piece individually, and then we'll ask to put them together. Good. Here's our first rep, hold. Good. One step, folks. One or two baby steps, and then a reminder, hold. Come on. Hold. Come on. Hold. Come on. Hold, good. Now, in this process, you may be thinking, oh, that looked pretty good. Some dogs are gonna do better than others, and X makes most of his training look fairly simple, okay? But if he moves into another object, I'm guessing based on how feathers kind of works through the beginning stages, he'll struggle a little bit with that as we progress through things, but in this stage, he made that look fairly easy. Big milestones here, folks, are turning around with an object in their mouth. So don't ask, go down to the end of the table and then expect them to turn around and hold. Um, we even break it down simpler than that, okay? We're only gonna walk one direction to start with. So I brought him back down to this end of the table. It's a little mental reset. And then we'll go again. Adjusting his back end so there's as little pivot as possible. Hold. Come in. Good, hold. This is where a longer table becomes very beneficial. You can get more reps good without having to turn around. This allows us to make um, a little bit more progress, maybe a little bit faster. Good. Because if we just had an eight foot table, oh, we would be here and we would have to then turn around or go back to the beginning. So having this full length of 16 feet, come on. Come on, come on, come on, good. Makes um, some of this movement based stuff easier. Now, if you don't have access to that, you can modify this, but uh, this is kind of the reason why. Good. Good boy. Now I wanna point out, we have only gone down the table this direction and we have only used one object. We are going to essentially perfect this, if you will. We'll do, uh, make sure that we have a really good understanding before we move on to new objects, just like we did when we started hold. Good boy. So we went half the distance, good. Now, I'm also evaluating the grip that I feel here is strong. He's comfortable and confident with this, so I feel like we could come 
back this way. Good. That's a good boy. Let's do one more here. Good boy. Come in. Ah, there it was. Okay. That big turn, it bumped on my arm. It was kind of half my fault, asking just a little bit too much of him. Good. Come in. Good boy. Hold. Come on. It doesn't have to be perfect. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Good. Okay. So as we move through this, I'm going to ask just a little bit more of them to demo because I'm not going to create another video on this process. It's hold and walk. That is the, the basis of what happened right there. You saw him carry something all the way down there, turn around and come back. We just need to be able to do it with a majority of the objects that we have in the bucket. If we switch to something like this, good. Hold this is a DT system soft mount trainer. It's our go-to's for most marking drills and he'll be retrieving a lot of these as he goes. Hold, make a, a little turn here, come on. Good boy, there you go, good boy. Okay, so he and I will progress through the rest of the things in the bucket and then that will also include birds. I said I won't make another video on this, but I will probably show the first step that we move into holding and walking birds because he's kind of struggled with the feathers just a smidgen, which is not that abnormal. Um, and I want to show you how to be able to work through that. But that is the end of this session. Remember, keep your sessions short. These videos run a little bit long, but if you are in a focused session with you and your dog, set a five minute timer, try and beat that timer. And I think that's all I've got for you today. This is Hex, the guy with the pink gun. We'll see you in his next video.